All right. Changing the team is staff likely. Oscar and Razor locked Humanoid likely to stay. Anyone that has an issue with Humanoid staying, bro, guys, there's like four mid laners that are interesting in all of Europe, right? And all of them are locked. Like, everyone says, oh, Humanoid, Humanoid. Humanoid is still a fucking good player. He had a not so good year, but they, even in a not so good year, even in a not so good year, they managed to do so fucking much. So, like, if you think Humanoid is going to be worse than whatever name you can think of right now, like, if someone says, yo, they should take a risk on Jackies, I can see, I can see that angle a little bit. Well, they should try to get Vladi, I can see that angle a little bit, but these players are locked, man. These players are locked, completely locked. And uh, Humanoid is still a fucking fantastic player. I think, I think, you know, people blame GMs for this shit, right? But I think also the community gives up on players a little bit too quick, you know? And and there's been moments where I'm like as well, you know, like Humanoid and Razork. Like I've, I've been saying that all of these players, like my take on Fnatic has been, these guys are all individually great and they will all probably do better in a different team. That's where I'm at, you know? Like, uh, probably these guys will just, cho they will just change uh, coaching staff, right? Change coaching staff completely. And then maybe they're fishing for the Mickey upset bot lane to see if that can happen, right? G2 Esports, BBS, Kumon, Caps, Labrov locked. And some are very likely to stay, but G2 is exploring a long shot buyout of an unnamed ADC. Uh, this, I'm pretty certain this is uh, Kalist, but I don't think this is going to happen. It's just that they will have to spend a ridiculous amount of money um because Casey Casey are not rich in money but they are rich in resources that like this this is this is Kalist. Paros's first option for G2 support be had one year contract left for BDS and they just promoted him after G2 G2 refused to buy him out. Uh okay, pretty based. How crazy is it that BDS had the two most sought after supports? Uh we move on. They're doing actual trials and like other teams. Ignar gone, Patrick very likely to leave. You know, these tryouts, I don't know if it's the case for Giants, but no team is doing tryouts like they are doing tryouts in fucking Korea. Uh, I feel like that's something that is necessary because, you know, people can put on their best face in scrims uh, and, and do fine. It's like the test of longevity is a very different topic. Well, at least you can get the proper eye test. It's the same way like how Champions Q is not uh, real. Ignar gone, Patrick very likely to leave. The Antonio broke his contract to play professional poker in Czech Republic. <laughs> bro, that's fucking hilarious. That is so fucking funny, bro. Some specific players that were mentioned, Yaik, Mickey X. The thing is, I've heard this information from multiple places. I'm not going to reveal what, but Mickey has a very specific lineup in mind that he wants to play with. And I don't know if that lineup is going to happen. I don't know if that lineup is going to happen. So we'll have to wait and see. It could be a world where Mickey doesn't play. Mad Lions Koi, corner leak directly to Wulu. Spanish core, Mirwin, Elioya, Supa, Alvaro locked. I think that's cool. And then the Georgia Pune thing. I think Mad Lions is super fucking exciting. This is, this is super fucking exciting. Really, really, really fucking exciting. Uh, I think that Georgia Pune and Mad Lions did a fucking really good decision. I think they, they were missing some power in the mid lane. They kept the core in Elio Yasu Palvaro. I think Mirwin did showcase at points in the year that he'd be good. I think that Georgia Pune is a really, really good signing, bro. Also from Georgia Pune's, uh, you know, direction to sign with Mad Lions, the organization of Ibai, and for him to be the first LCS player, North American, to play in L LEC is really, really cool. I love that, man. That's super nice. I think this is really insane for everybody involved because they needed some star power. And I think that Jojo can reinvent himself here, which is super cool. I think in the long run, Jojo Pune will make more money than he could have made in elsewhere. Because I think when Jojo Pune will stream in Europe... With uh, under the Mad Lions banner, he's going to have 10k viewers, bro. I think Jojo will just be a giga slacker like an NA. Nah, I doubt it, bro. No way. It's 
with this team, it's not gonna fucking fly. By the way, I think I think the culture in LEC is way harder to slack than in North America. In North America, it's very easy to slack. Very easy. Sunshine, beaches, good food. I, this team is not going to let that happen, bro. There's nothing to do in Berlin, bro. Nothing. He's going to arrive in fucking winter split. It's going to be cold as fuck. He's not going to leave his house, bro. Like, he's not going to slack. I am so certain. Coming up, Kana Vladi locked. Kalis look likely going to AD. Targmas likely continuing in support. Dot, dot, dot. I don't know why, why did all these dots. This guy who translated put his own commentary in through question marks and dots. Uh, anyhow, I think that Casey probably made commitments to Tagamas, but I think if they are not if they are not chasing the Yike Mickey option, I think uh, it's not good. I think if this team has Yanko's Mickey, I think they could actually like contend top three, and I feel like that's like a fucking world championship right there, bro. Uh, like not like a qualification to world championship, but they probably made like verbal agreements to Targamas, right? They probably made verbal agreements to Targamas, and Yankos is uh, not happy to sign. This will be heard, right? Um, could be for many reasons. Could be money. Could be whatever. Could be roster. Could be like his past with Targamas. Could be anything, right? It's no point in speculating. Could be anything. All right. Closer is fallback plan if they can't lock a jungle they want. Okay. I think that um, the core of closer Targamas, I think that um, in my mind, this will be like a building year for Kalis and Vladi. I think Kalis and Vladi are in for the long haul, but I think that Casey will slowly get there, you know? Because I think I think Vladi and Kalis are fucking great building pieces. Fantastic building pieces. Uh, we continue. Team Vitality, Nak Nako, Linsas, Chaik, Karzi, Hilisan. I personally am not super hyped about Chaik. I have to see more. Uh, I, I haven't, I have seen a couple of games and I didn't think he was that great, but it's like a sample size that really doesn't matter. Uh, Linsas, I think he deserves more time. Uh, and Nak Nako is mechanically very talented, but let's see if he will learn how to play like actual LEC macro, you know? Because that's that's my main concern here about this team. There's nothing that has been added here that makes me think that they're going to figure out how to play LEC Macro. Like, is that going to happen? Because this was the problem the whole last year, and now they added more rookies to the mix. Like, these guys need to start working early, and they have, you know. They, they have already done a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Champions queue. Bit past on Nitsky, bit trying to change the image of wasting time and money, say that their academy team matters. Okay. TBDS, roster locked, irrelevant, 113, Nuke, Ice, Paros. I think the most interesting element here is 113. Uh, I wonder if the idea is simply 113 is someone that uh, knows how to start fights, takes fights, is strong enough to push you forward, moves forward. Um, I can see the angle because I do think that everybody else here is quite timid. Uh, we'll have to see how Paros and 113 work together. Um, I think that uh, the, the carry position so forth are decent, but then I, I I do feel like this BDS roster can then can hit similar ceilings to what they did uh, um, previous year. But we have to see. I do think that uh, the the biggest upgrade probably is in Adam's position. Okay, SK Gaming Genex signed to play top lane joins Isma and Reeker. All right, so SK Gaming are are basically SK Gaming. They pass on Photon and Adam. I think that makes sense. I would be very surprised if a team like SK is signing uh, Adam, right? Uh, it just doesn't fit what I know of them. Um, but lane undecided, but changes are coming. So basically, Rahel and Duon, uh, changes are coming apparently. Okay. Uh, I wonder who, like, it would be really fun if this team, for example, would get like Jack Spectra. You know, that would be cool. Um, just um, give give these, these players that deserve a shot a shot, you know, like a like a crowny back maybe in the mix, you know, it would, would be cool, I think. As gaming is paying bench wages instead of full pay for the months where there is no pro play after season is over. Very odd. This is this is not customary, but 
and is frowned upon, but it is allowed, as far as I understand. Um, could be tied to the fact that um, they are tightening up how much money the LEC teams are re receiving, you know? Could be. Team Retics, Sten signs for support after first option Labrov was gone, joins Carlson Shio Flackett on the team. I don't know. I feel like I feel like this this roster to me is just a worse version of um, the um, SK Gaming roster. <laughs> That's how it feels for me. But um, I got it's hard for me to get excited by Flackett Shio. I don't know much about Carlson. You know, maybe he's a demon on the chessboard. Um, this doesn't look too exciting to me. You know. All right. Rogue, they're actively trying to sell the slot. Team Falcons from Saudi Arabia agreed to buy, but was blocked by a riot. Second buyers merged, but deal is not done. Rogue cannot send offers to players until sale, sale is resolved either way. It's funny because now Rogue, if, if this is, the, if this is, if this is, what's up? If this is, what's up? Then. Then, then, then Rogue is like, yeah, if, if you guys don't let us sell, we are going to be, we are going to straight up, you know, just sign the first players that say hello. And that's it. Speaker is getting interest from multiple LEC teams, but there's interest in bringing over any players into Europe. Adam doesn't have a team in Europe. Disky also does not have a team in Europe. Mickey is trying to be LeBron and be a player GM to assemble a super team to pitch, but it's difficult due to expensive players involved. Yeah, I, I, I can say I don't want to be the one to leak the players he wants to play with, but I think it's very likely that um, it's not going to happen. The, the only place it could potentially happen is in the fucking um, in the team uh, that uh, would buy the rogue spot. Bo out of LEC, not surprising. You're right, I love Bo, but not surprising. Upset may be teamless. Perks is teamless. Uh, Berserker likely headed to Asian team. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to LPL. And then Nemesis won't come back to LEC. Okay. This one is pretty certain too. I know I both spilled some hype up, but it is what it is, you know? I think this one... Uh, I think this one's not going to happen. I think that is... Uh, like looking at looking at where we're at, I I do think that Upset is going to 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 play. I think if anything, like Mickey maybe won't play. I don't think uh, this is this is not going to happen. I think. I think I'm looking at, you know, either either Fnatic should snap him up. There's a giant X uh, Giants should snap him up. You know, make a good roster there. Um, I think I think that's that's where you are. You know. But maybe maybe Fnatic is happy to just change. Uh, maybe Fnatic is just happy to change only the coaching stuff, you know. 